Thank you, Elias, for your kind introduction. And uh, welcome you all to this uh, 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 workshop. And I would like to congratulate and commend the organizers for setting up this workshop, which would be very useful, I think, for uh, students and the researchers and uh, other people working in this field. Um, I've asked to present uh, very briefly current trends and future trends in computational me mechanics and engineering applications. And I will start with uh, a prophecy, uh, prophecy that was said and written 40 years ago by Arthur Jaffer in a paper ordering the universe, the role of mathematics published in Siam Review Journal. Although the fastest computers can execute millions of operations in one second, they are always too slow because the bigger and better computers become, the larger are the problems scientists and engineers want to solve. So this prophecy I think is very valid until today. And the reason is, as you can see here, for example, in this graph, where you can see these two uh, curves. The first curve down there is the uh, computer ability, capability through the years. And on the upper curve, you can see the computational demand of the different problems that engineers and scientists want to solve. So there is always through the years, the computational demand being larger than the computational available power. And the reason for this is that uh, the computer simulation of physical phenomena is highly dependent on the degree of complexity of the physical problem, the accuracy of the numerical methods to describe the physical problem, the computer capabilities to handle the discretized systems of algebraic equations, and the number of times these discretized systems need to be solved. So if we look here, for example, at the degree of complexity of the physical problems that an engineer or a scientist has to solve, and look at the type of problem, we can see that the simplest type of problem is the deterministic analysis and design problem. Then if we want to be more, more involved, computationally involved, we can consider probabilistic theories in analysis and design. And then looking at the system response, it can be static loading with linear and nonlinear response or dynamic loading, again, with linear or nonlinear system response. And then if we look at the type of simulation, we can have single scale as a simple simulation uh, type of problem and to multi-scale, which is a more involved, of course, or single physics to multi-physics. And if we come up to the most demanding problem, the most demanding problem can combine probabilistic design, nonlinear dynamic system, system response, and multi-scale and multi-physics simulation. So we can see that by looking at the most demanding problem, we, you can imagine how much computational effort and power we need to solve realistic and uh, real world engineering problems. So let's have a look at the deterministic problems going from the simple one, which is static analysis with linear response and going through different, uh, more involved problems with nonlinear response, with dynamic and nonlinear response, with design optimization, with linear and nonlinear response. We can go to the 12th problem, which is the most demanding one, which is the dynamic, multi-objective design optimization with nonlinear system response. So if, if we look at the computational effort that is required to solve this type of problems and consider, for example, that for the first one, the deterministic problem with uh, linear static response, we have one order of magnitude computational effort. The 12th problem, which is the dynamic multi-objective design optimization with non-linear response would require seven orders of magnitude more computational effort than the first one. So this, of course, cannot be attained for real world problems until some drastic actions must be done 
in reducing the computational effort to let's say four to five orders of magnitude. Going now to more involved problems, which are probabilistic problems, and looking and starting from the first one, the simplest one, which is the reliability with static analysis and linear response, going through all these 19 different and more involved problems in the probabilistic analysis design, we end up with a reliability, robust earthquake design optimization or dynamic design optimization with nonlinear response. If we look the same, let's say, bars in, com in uh, computational power required by these problems, we can see that the first, the simplest one, probabilistic problem, the PR1, needs four orders of magnitude more computational effort than the most that the simpler deterministic uh, static analysis problem. If we go to the 19th one, we can see that we need almost, this is a qualitative, of course, estimation, 12 orders of magnitude more computational effort to solve this type of problems. So we need to find ways to reduce this computational effort by, let's say, four, six, or seven orders of magnitude in order to be able to solve realistic real-world problems. Now, the question is, how to do this? Well, reducing the computational cost can be done in a number of ways by using accurate enough and cost-efficient reduced order models for the numerical simulation of the physical problem. We can use discretized models by a direct link to CAD geometry to reduce the effort of generating the mesh, the complicated mesh of the system. To use efficient computation integration and formulation of the system matrices, fast solution algorithms for the resulting algebraic equations, robust and reliable optimization algorithms for achieving the best possible design in, op design, in optimized design problems, handling the uncertainties with an affordable computing time, and implementation of artificial intelligence and machine learning methodologies for predicting the system's response. So you have to combine all these things, all these different approaches in order to be able to reduce the computational effort by orders of magnitude in order to be able to solve realistic problems in science and engineering. So coming now to the simulation-based applied science and engineering has been a, a rapidly evolving over the past few day, decades, and this trend is expected to continue in the future. What are the current and future trends in SBASC? First of all is the multi-scale and multi-physics simulations. As simulations become more complex, the need for multi-scale and multi-physics simulations is increasing. And this could involve the simulations of coupled problems in multiple physical phenomena and scales simultaneously, such as the multi-scale, multi-physics probabilistic design with no linear dynamics response that I referred to you previously. The second is the use of high performance computing. The high performance computing are becoming more accessible and affordable, allowing simulations to be run faster and with higher accuracy. The hybrid computer system incorporating shared memory machines together with GPUs is an, an answer to accessible and affordable computing systems that is especially true for simulations involving complex geometries and multi-physics problems. Digital twins. A digital twin is a virtual replica of a physical system which can be used to simulate and predict its behavior. So this technology is being increasingly used in the design and operation of complex systems as indicated previously. Cloud computing offers a cost-effective and scalable way to perform simulations, especially in smaller companies or research groups 
who do not have access to HPC resources. Artificial intelligence and machine learning, the main topic of this workshop is of course a very important column, a pillar uh, in this effort. They are being used to improve the accuracy of simulations and reduce computational costs orders of magnitude than the conventional simulation methods. Neural networks and machine learners, as you are going to hear from the speakers of this workshop, can be used to predict the behavior of complex systems and physical phenomena with a high degree of accuracy. Additive manufacturing. Additive manufacturing, also known as 3D printing, is changing the way components are designed and manufactured. Simulation software is being used to optimize the design of components before they are printed, reducing the need for physical prototypes and of course, reducing the time and also the cost of uh, the preparation of these uh, design products. Now, I would like to close with another prophecy which has been said 60 years ago by the founding father of the finite element method, John H. Argyris. He presented a lecture at the Royal Aeronautical Society of London. And the title of his lecture was The Computer Shapes the Theory. Now this very prophetical, prophetical lecture was not well received by the uh, professors in mechanics at that time because they thought that Professor Ajaris was uh, insane to say these things. But after 60 years, uh, we can say that this is a, a very valid statement which lasts for many years and will last for many years more. So I would like to thank you for um, being with me in this presentation. And I would like to ask Elias to uh, address uh, any comment or question to me or by the audience if this is possible. Thank you very much.